so what we're going to do now is yesterday what was the last point we did we talked about how you take views on euro dollar futures remember okay so the euro dollar futures component is not going to be part of your uh, software based uh, trading project okay which is one part of the case which is the third last part of the case so the case can be discussed uh, independent of the trading project you can have the case as a discussion uh, case as well but then we have uh, made it uh, a little bit hopefully a little bit better by adding the trading project in a way that is connected to the case so what we were discussing yesterday is the hedging with because the euro dollar futures part we'll cover it quickly first uh, how you hedge uh, floating rate what we're going to cover is how you hedge floating interest rate risk with euro dollar futures maybe we can try and op open up a chart as well here if we can um, right so what did we you remember what we did so every year so what, what, what we're going to do this chart is not very good um, that is because it's the time frame is <coughs> I, don't, I don't want this volume not working out very well this chart okay so let's anyway let's close this we'll we'll just look at uh, the deposit rate chart on uh, on uh, this on the Fred charts um, but we already have interest rates here okay so what we discussed yesterday is see we're going to discuss the example of a I'm only going to take a one-year loan although the case uh, the loan in the case is a five-year loan so you're going to be looking at if it's three a five-year loan against three month LIBOR there are going to be how many uh, interest periods there'll be three no how many interest periods uh, interest no there'll be like 20 there'll be 20 interest accrual periods okay we are we should treat them as 20 interest in accrual periods because the interest rate on each of those periods could be different it's not a fixed rate loan where you have a same rate of interest it's a floating rate loan so you have 20 you should be consider uh, you should consider it as uh, 20 different interest accrual periods four for each year and it's a five-year loan yes this is clear everyone but we are going to discuss the hedging example just with a one-year loan because we want to we don't want to be uh, you know rep because the logic is the same we are not going to discuss everything we're not going to repeat it okay we'll just show you the logic the logic is going to be the same so what you're going to do is you're going to call up a chart of LIBOR and you'll get even longer term data I can't find the series right now because you should be able to get this data even from uh, the 70s and things uh, on this uh, platform itself okay so we just take this all right so we look at this LIBOR chart so now you're the now we are getting into we are moving away from the underlying positions we have already discussed the underlying positions we know what the underlying positions are now we're just focusing on the uh, particular KRF uh, market which is the three month US dollar LIBOR which is the KRF associated with the floating rate dollar loan right so here we have the floating rate uh, We have the floating rate dollar loan okay so the krf associated with this no exchange rate risk but we do have interest rate risk because this loan is on floating rates and the particular krf here is the uh, krf market is the three month euro dollar okay so we are concerned so if this goes up we are and we are short this as puneet correctly pointed out yesterday uh, that we are short this market the underlying position is short okay so we are concerned about things going up so we are going to now try and see, we're going to see how the hedging will work okay so we are going to um, let's go here and call out the well, let's look at the prices and we are just going to assume that our loan is where is the display okay i think this is too big all right markets uh, interest rates So we are now going to we are, what we are doing now is we are looking for the euro dollar futures prices okay because what does the euro dollar futures price give us so here you have the most important interest rate short term interest rate contract in the world now you can see the sofa i told you about sofa sofa is already now they've already got futures on this i was not aware of this that they already started the futures so sofa is the alternative to libor so the three month euro dollar futures is uh, indexed to libor okay and because there have been a lot of hedging a lot of uh, scandals with respect to the fixing of libor and the manipulation of the rate of the rate now we have a new interest rate benchmark secured overnight funding rate okay this works i think on the basis of actual transactions 
so now you already have uh, sofa futures as well but anyway we are interested in this one this has uh, much more you can see the difference in the volumes so the uh, sofa contract has not yet caught on so the euro dollar futures is still the most actively traded short-term interest rate contract in the world so what we are going to do is we are going to assume that we're going to be see what we are doing so first understand what the euro dollar futures price represents okay if you if you remember when we looked at our calc sheet we went into futures right so when you have a price like this this 98 11 half i think it's pretty much it was a little uh, so the december price is now dropped a little bit okay so it was 98 11 half so at any point of time when you look at the euro dollar futures price and remember that because it's a futures contract so there isn't just one euro dollar futures price there are different euro dollar futures prices for different maturities it's the same as the same is true of options and the same is true of forwards so one of the common traits of these of properties of these kinds of contracts forwards futures options is that you don't just get one price unlike a spot unlike a spot price you don't get the spot price is only one price okay <coughs> like this is spot this is spot euro uh, against euro dollar fx this is just one price it's for two days uh, the settlement if you trade at this price now you'll be settling the settlement date is going to be two business days from today that's a spot price but if you look at futures or forwards or options you've already seen in the case of options and you've already seen in the case of futures also you can see how many different prices there are there are going to be multiple prices for each maturity one for each different maturity okay for different different contract periods a different contract months we call them contract months so what we're going to assume is we'll just take the simple uh, you know the uh, simple quarterly resets so we are going to assume that our loan the loan that we are trying to to hedge okay uh, the loan that we are trying to hedge has three remaining uh, the three remaining so one setting was already done in in December okay so we have three remaining settings coming up are you following what I'm saying let's draw this uh, once again um, okay let's draw this once again so we have uh, we have only three remaining settings left so let me just remove this here Okay, I will keep one, I will remove this and then we'll just further, yeah. So we have this, now one setting, we already know the rate, okay, so we'll change the color. Are you guys able to see the colors? Yeah, okay. So one setting, so first understand what the euro, and let's assume that, let's take these few prices from the, uh, from the website okay so let's assume there are settings that the periods that i've drawn here <coughs> um, where is this yeah so the periods that i've drawn here okay these are this this we already know we are over here okay we are over here let's assume that we are over here and we have one pay period over here which we for which we already know the interest rate so there's no risk so i've changed the color okay there's no risk now for these we are we are at risk because we don't know what the fixing is going to be three months later what the dollar uh, euro dollar deposit rate interest rate will be for three month euro dollar deposits in london three months from today we don't know what that is because when we look at this chart it can be pretty scary scary because if you have large loans in this case the loan is very small because of the constraints of the project but if you have a large loan even this kind of movement is quite big okay when moving from 28 basis points to 2.5 255 basis points is a huge move on on three month interest rates all right so you can really get killed in terms of your interest liabilities how much money you have to pay to uh, to satisfy your interest liabilities so this what we look at this chart and we are a little bit apprehensive so we are now looking at our forward settings so this is three months from today this is uh, six months from today and this is nine months from today that's our risk is everyone clear about this we have simplified the example because the, the logic will be the same so i don't want to draw a five-year loan uh, period uh, set of periods so we're going to assume that it's a one-year loan and we have to cover but we are concerned about this period uh, this reset this interest rate fix we are concerned with this fix and this fix everyone clear yes. let's assume that these are actually represented by these contracts we look at this we assume that they are going to be represented by the march contract the june contract and the uh, september contract uh, june is july august september right yeah so the september so these contract these are the quarterly cycles so march june september december 
okay this is clear these are the quote this would be called the quarterly cycles for the interest rate contract for for all futures contracts so are you following what i'm saying yes, that we assume that this is march 2020 this period here this is march 2020 whatever the settlement date and let's it seems to be around halfway through the month so we'll say this this is going to be fixed on the the fixing for this particular contract is going to be just like here you can see for the december contract it's december 16th okay 16th of December so I just assume that it's going to be uh, we're, instead of going through the contract specifications and seeing exactly where the third Saturday, the Thursday is okay a third Wednesday is then go back to business days instead of that's what you would do in real life okay in real life what you have to do is go into the contract specs okay look at the uh, what is the settlement rule okay let's go through that exercise once so that you know what has to be done in real life in real life um, let me put down these prices from here okay we'll come back here okay contract specs let's come in real life what you have to do is your actual um, in real life what you'll see what is the settlement yeah it is financially settled okay so you can't actually deliver there's a part where it is uh, they've told you uh, where um, this is minimum fluctuation Yeah, so termination of trading is the third Wednesday of the contract month. Okay, can you see this? Second London Bank business day before third Wednesday of the contract month. So in real life, what you'll have to do, suppose you have a five-year loan, you'll have to do this for every interest fixing date that you're looking at, which is at uh, which is a source of risk. Is everyone following yes. what is being done? If you don't follow at any point, you have to ask questions. Okay, so is everyone following this system? Yes, okay, so you have to go for each of these periods. Okay, and identify the relevant contract, and then for that contract, you have to go. Uh, so for the March contract, I would have to go to find out what is the date for the third. What's the date for the third Wednesday of March, 2020? And then I have to go back three. I uh, go. I have to go back two business days from that day to London Bank business days from that day. So the third Wednesday is uh, 11th and I say 10th and 9th are open in London. Then I will go back from two days from 30, uh, 11th to 10 and 9. So I'll be looking at 9th of uh, December as the fixing date. Okay, is this clear? 9th of March as the fixing date. Yes, everyone is clear. So for our purposes, this equivalent of the fixing date, the equivalent of 9th of March in this example that I gave you, we will assume that it's always the middle of the month. Okay, just for the sake of, but in real life, you'll have to go and identify the actual date. Yes, and we are going to assume that this 9th of March part that we mentioned, that corresponds to the actual fixing date on the loan. Remember, because the loan is also uh, uh, an under uh, the loan is being negotiated with banks. Are you guys following? Is everyone following the discussion? Yes, sir. You will have to identify the actual uh, settlement date, the fixing date that applies to each futures contract. Okay, and which? Uh, how do you identify the futures contracts? You look at the terms of your loan. The terms of your loan will say that your LIBOR is going to be fixed on some date okay maybe on the 15th of march so every date will be mentioned okay or a rule will be given by which you can figure out every date so when you look at your loan agreement you will see in the loan agreement uh, what are the dates for the LIBOR fixings that will apply to your loan is everyone following okay so we assume that the loan agreement also the LIBOR fixing dates that are written in the loan agreement correspond to the uh, these contracts okay if we go back to our so what is this you should also memorize this now for the sake so you don't have to keep coming back so uh, uh, third wednesday of the contract one that's what i thought yeah so because every contract has different okay now we go back to quotes all right so now we'll see we are going to assume so what we are going to assume let's make this very clear what we are going to assume is that um, this th all of these when you uh, take any of them you take the march contract the june contract and the september contract okay and we whatever the actual the, the uh, and for those each of those contracts you apply this rule find the third wednesday of the month and then go back to bank business days in london and that's your libor fixing date for that contract is everyone following okay so and we assume that that libor fixing date corresponds exactly to the LIBOR fixing dates mentioned on our loan. Yes. So if we get and we are
I'm going to assume that say that's 15 month, 15th of every month for the sake of simplification. Yes. So we are going to so and we are going to assume that it's got, so therefore we are these are going to be perfect hedges. These instruments, these zero dollar futures contracts will be perfect hedges. Yes. So now understand what the price, uh, what the futures contract price means in the case of euro dollar futures. What is the meaning of this price? Let's write down these prices 98, 28. Uh, these prices are 98. Uh, okay, it's here. Okay, so let's write down these prices. So right now it's 98, 28, 98, 28. All right. And what is this? 98, 28. Remember the next two prices. Next is 98, 36. Is it 36? 98, 36. You guys can see at the back, last bench. 98.36 and then September is 98.41 half. Okay, so let's write this 98.36, 98.36 and 98.41 half. All right. Now, now what does it mean if we see these prices? What is the meaning of these prices? So first, first understand. Can anyone tell me what is the interpretation of this price? What does this tell you about the market's forecast for the cash market rate? Uh, that the, what what is the market's forecast for the uh, euro dollar fixing for these contracts the the last euro dollar fixing for these contracts yes but since you're smiling you can tell us <laughs> yes question what is the markets you can see the market prices <laughs> you can see the market prices Yes. Yeah. 98 28 for March, yes. uh, 98 36 for June, and 98 41 half for September. Yes? <laughs> just take one of them, just take one of them. If the market price, if the March 2020, okay, and assume that the settlement uh, date, the settlement date, uh, the relevant futures uh, fixing date, for the settlement of this contract okay the final settlement of this contract assume is 15th of march okay which means if there are no holidays and and, and there are no so, so that means 17th march would be the actual uh, 17th march would be the third wednesday of march and we assume that uh, the uh, that 15th and 16th are open in london so we go back to business day so that's 15th of uh, so this contract will settle finally against the 15th march uh, three month euro dollar deposit fixing in london okay everyone follows yes. okay so now i'm asking bharat what is the meaning of this price now, if the market price now for march 2020 contract for the march 2020 contract for euro dollar futures mm -hmm. is 9828 so what does that tell you about the market's forecast for the three month euro dollar deposit fixing that will occur on 15th of march is my question clear <laughs> is there any information my question my question is is there any information in this price you have to all understand what this means you have to understand what the euro dollar futures price means we have already gone through the exercise i don't know why people are not able to answer we have gone through the exercise twice what information does this price give you about the market's forecast for the three month euro dollar deposit fixing that will occur on 15th of march is my question clear no, 98. I don't know if you can see. Can you see 98.28? <laughs> yeah, so so the current the current euro dollar futures price, the current euro dollar futures price for March 2020 is 98.28. My question is, what information does that uh, contain? Is the uh, what can you say about the market's <laughs> forecast? <laughs> Yeah, let's let let's see once let's see what Tarun has to say. Let's see what Tarun. Okay. No, I've completed my question. What exercise did we do here? One minute. What exercise did we do here? Okay, let's take. Um, yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, this will be this minus this minus uh, 100 minus 2.5. Okay. So now let's see. Now I, are you able to follow what this is? Okay. So what is remember if you go back to the euro dollar contract specs, 
the price is defined as 100 minus the fixing yes, right so that means when the euro dollar futures price is 98.28 the market the current market price the forecast embedded in this market price this price is actually making a forecast for what the euro dollar three month euro dollar deposit fixing will be in london this is the market's forecast the market's forecast may be wrong or it may be right we don't know but it's it's a market price that has tremendous value okay market price has tremendous value rather than all these airy fairy things like you know what you have in the uh, equity risk premium nobody knows you don't know where, where to find it you don't even know where to find it but at least the market price and you know where to find it if you go to the uh, cme website you can see where the market price is so the market price has tremendous sanctity so what does this mean that means the market is predicting based on this price that the uh, futures uh, the uh, three month euro dollar fixing in london on 15th of march is going to be 100 minus this price okay. now the price has changed the night has price has changed okay okay so the price is going to be 1.72 yes are you following this understand first what is the meaning of the euro dollar futures price so this is what it means across the curve okay this is the entire euro dollar futures curve okay this is what it means across the curve that means for june what is this now again i have to cut for yes. bharat no, what you are talking to her no sir what no sir Groupism. that means uh, <laughs> no she didn't she didn't say anything i'm not uh, uh, penalizing her but you you talk to her so i'm not talking to her sir no <laughs> then you are just turning no no one minute if you communicate with her that is also if you turn towards her that is also a uh, penalty okay all right one minute let's go back to work okay let's let's uh, no he's okay because uh, he is called aurora so bharat means Shabha. so okay all right guys now let's go back to um, let's go back to the discussion okay so now do you understand yes, when you see a euro dollar futures curve like this what you can find on the cme website now you can understand the meaning so you can immediately put into a spreadsheet you can put in a dynamic data exchange and all that excel you can put it into a spreadsheet take the prices into a spreadsheet all right so uh, and then you can lay out what is the market's forecast you can see a string of forecasts right already here you can see a string of forecasts that forecast for 15th march fixing is 1.72 forecast for um, uh, 15th uh, june is this the forecast for 15th september is this is this clear now there is information in the there is information in the market price remember the market price has tremendous sanctity because all this people talk all kinds of things oh this is overvalued over undervalued whatever okay but the point is the market price is what it is okay so uh, therefore uh, that that has tremendous sanctity so uh, so now you can see the market's forecast now what are you going to do you are worried about so the market seems to be predicting that the euro dollar libor uh, uh, that three month euro dollar deposits will actually start falling okay that's the one that's what the market is predicting right so march june and september but suppose you don't agree with this view okay suppose you are the treasury manager now puneet takes a view on this he takes looks at the chart and he decides that no the market's view is not correct i actually think this is going to shoot up okay so he has a different set of forecasts he looks at the he looks and also now you understand this is forecast based valuation we are going to use the same market price versus fair value which we have done a couple of times already okay because you guys are not paying attention so you have not uh, you are not able to answer this question okay this is already discussed so please make sure you understand it properly now we're going to use the same price versus fair value comparison okay and where is the fair value going to come from it's going to come from a forecast based valuation model all right so this is going to be what is going to happen here now you are the risk manager okay you are concerned about the fact that the market's forecasts are wrong that actually you, you because market forecasts could be right or they could be wrong all right so uh, and your view so here here's where the view taking comes in now you understand why i make you focus on financial markets because in everything you do in corporate treasury or on the trading desk everywhere in finance and a finance re related role capital raising everywhere you will have to take views on markets okay you'll have to take views on markets so that's what you do now you sit here as a trading as a risk manager and you take a view on markets and here what he's doing is he's taking a view on the euro dollar uh, deposits what the fixing rate will be and he takes a very bullish view so let's assume so what he does 
is he puts in his own forecasts okay so his forecasts are let's say this is going to be 1.98 this fixing this fixing is going to be 2.3 and this fixing is going to be 2.45 uh, let's say this is this clear these are your views okay so let's write this down these are views okay these are actually in what we would call implied forecast all right and this is the e uh, edlr prices okay so the implied forecast is implied by the futures price why implied forecast because the futures price is got uh, is implying a forecast for the under, uh, thing so now based on your view so this is the forecast that you have this is a separate forecast that the treasury manager has come up with his independent analysis of the market tells him that this should be the these are going to be the fixings so based on the forecast based uh, forecast he's going to come up with a forecast based valuation so based on this this should be uh yeah so we are going to come up with the let's write this down so you understand clearly how everything works is this make sure we, it's correct it's 100 minus this okay so now what you have is let's copy this oh sorry we don't need this all right so this is what you have now what are these this is we don't need to describe this this is um this is the fair value this is the fair value of the <coughs> euro dollar futures the respective euro dollar futures contracts okay which we are interested in okay uh, based on my forecast based valuation the treasury manager makes a forecast for three month euro dollar deposit rate fixings that are going to happen in the future for the periods that relate to his loan right these periods that we have not yet fixed the rates okay because we don't know three months forward six months forward nine months forward we don't know what the fixings are going to be the market's forecast is this this and this sorry the market's forecast is this this and this but the treasury manager doesn't agree with the market's forecast he he should not accept the market forecast he should always come up with his own independent view and he comes up with his independent view his views are this this and this based on his views he come up, comes up with remember forecast based valuation this is no different from npv or your gordon growth model or irr or any of your stock other stock valuation models earnings discount model bond valuation anything okay so same kind of format uh, forecast based valuation the fair value based on your views the fair value is remember this is actually this minus this right so this is the fair value of the futures contract which is based on your forecast okay so this is forecast based valuation now what you do is you compare the fair value to the uh, market so the fair value of the futures contract is here you're going to compare it to the market price okay and what do you find that here the market price is higher than fair value higher than fair value and higher than fair value okay. yeah so overvalued is what the people in the market will normally use so you need to learn at two levels so in the market people will say that uh, your futures contract is overvalued but actually the technically correct term would be it is overpriced it is overpriced relative to because the market is never valued the market price is always a price so understand it at two levels because if you start going and talking like this in the industry people will also not be able to understand you so you will talk to them about being overvalued that's what people will say but you have to understand that what they're saying is actually technically incorrect what they should be saying is that the market is overpriced relative to my assessment of fair value my assessment now your assessment could be different Rajan's assessment could be different okay because it's a forecast based valuation it's not AFV it is not proper AFV like FX forwards you know FX cross rates it's not that kind of or like put call parity okay those are real arbitrage free valuation examples so other than anything other than pure arbitrage uh, true arbitrage free valuation is always going to be a subjective valuation all right so therefore the correct statement that you should be making is the market is over in this situation you would look at this market and you would say the market is overpriced relative to my estimate of fair value this is clear but in in the industry what people will say is the market is overvalued okay so you have to un you have to understand it in both ways you can talk you have to talk their language but you should also every time you say that 
you should also understand that the language is technically incorrect because why is it important to be technically correct because it makes your thinking clear okay so uh, that's very important okay so now you understand now the decision is very clear what is he going to do to the euro dollar futures contracts he's going to be selling is everyone clear about that yes 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 clear because you're going to be selling because market price is higher than fair value and the framework that you're using in that framework the system is that if market price is higher than fair value you sell if it's below you buy okay in situations where it's possible to sell like some indian equities you discovered that even when you wanted to sell you can't sell because the stock lending and borrowing system is not well developed but in theory you would sell yes everyone's clear okay aroda are you following yeah 100% clear okay so you're going to be selling okay so that's what you do so in this case we are not going to be including this because we don't have enough capital in the account we are not going to be excess uh, using this uh, the uh, we would not be trading the euro dollar futures in our project but you should understand clearly how it would work if you did not have a capital constraint in practice when you're managing when you're managing the hedge book for a corporation you would have enough capital i would assume okay to uh, to su support your hedging activities the reason we are not doing the euro dollar futures as part of your project we don't have enough capital okay in the in the trading account is everyone clear what you would do you would form a view and then you would sell if it is otherwise you would buy. now let's look at it the other side also let's assume now let's change it around what would you do so if you have uh, let's say now let's change your uh, implied forecast and your view let's make your view 1.5 okay in this case um your view is let's make it like 1.42 or 43 and let's make this uh 1.33 okay okay in this case what is going to happen if these are your views what is happening now market price minus for fair value if we write out one sec market price minus fair value we write this expression okay all right now what do we do we buy okay now here's the problem now we are going to go back into the decision problems okay here you are not going to buy because here what you are going to do is you will just sit on the sidelines okay because because you have a passive risk book you already have an exposure okay so yeah so if you are short in this case your underlying position is short yes. okay so this is where you see the asymmetry in the now you see how the decision problems are slightly differently solved in the two situations where you have a speculators book and a hedgers book there are some slight differences okay <coughs> the decision problems in theory are all the same but the way you solve it some of them are automatically solved and all that so in this case what you are going to do because remember your underlying position now we will uh, actually we should have uh, it's difficult to sequence the topics in the right way uh, but the point is that you are already why are you looking at the euro dollar futures prices at all because you already have an underlying position okay this is clear you are short if you are short and your view is that the market is going to keep on coming down okay in this case you don't take profit okay because you need to let this uh, if you if you uh, we can look at a more advanced situation of a dynamic hedging program but we are not going to get into that we need to first understand how a he how a hedging program would work we are going to consider a simple hedging program okay where uh, we just so in this case what is going to happen because your underlying position is already short so it is like here you are already short this market you already the market is here you are already short okay and your view is the market is going to keep on falling in this case therefore you will not you will not buy this is clear even though the market price is below fair value okay the framework that have the application of that framework has to be modified by the fact that you already have an underlying position because this is a hedgers book okay it's not a speculators book you did not start with zero risk if you were running a speculators book then you would buy if you were running a speculators book here because that means you have zero position you have zero position to start with okay in a speculators book you would buy so you would follow both sides 
if market price is below fair value you would buy if it's above fair value you would sell but in the case of a hedger's book because there's already an underlying position that means what you're looking at is a situation where you are um, you are already short and the market you're expecting the market to fall further okay why was he buying in the in the other case why was he buying because he was short and he was afraid that the price would go up right we are calling this the price the interest rate so he was afraid that the market would go up okay so if you are already short and the market is going to go up then you're going to have losses <coughs> yes yes sir so what you are trying to do here you get a flavor of how hedging works how hedging works and how the hedge position works relative to the underlying position remember you always have an underlying position in this situation in a hedger's book okay you already have the underlying position where you're short so why did he buy in the earlier case because he he has a very bullish view on the market and he's short and he's afraid of the view comes uh, view comes out to be proves to be correct and the market actually shoots up then he lose a lot of money on the underlying position are you following the logic yes okay that's why to hedge that he bought okay to offset that are you following the logic he was buying to because the underlying position would incur losses he would be paying more on the loan but the under the futures contracts would show a profit if he bought it in the earlier case and then it went up and futures contracts actually uh, sorry in the earlier case we're talking about selling the futures contracts okay he would have sold the futures contracts and then the few if the his view was correct as the rate started rising the futures contracts would drop in value and you would make a profit are you following in the previous case you would have sold the futures contracts okay we should have done this and uh, we can do this in two uh, cases we can go and talk about the, that way we can see both together without wiping anything out okay so in this case we can have different views say 1.95 1.98 2.35 2.34 and uh, 2.65 all right now you see all the way there is a difference between the market price is above fair value for the futures contracts are you following this is the earlier case that we looked at in this case now he is going to be a seller of few of the uh, futures contracts and how will the hedge position work now you get through this example you get an understanding of how the hedge position works remember hedge position is like a offset okay think of it as an offset let's do it this way as an offset uh, you understand what offset is something yeah i mean something which is kind of cancels out something else okay so in the first round maybe you you have a score of plus 10 but in the second round you have a score of minus 10 so your net score is zero because your second round score has perfectly offset your first round score okay so that's what offset means so the hedge position works like an offset okay so let's just talk about this kind of uh, let's look at this way okay so if you have an underlying position here which is going to show losses you will set up a hedge position here which is supposed to show profits okay so understand why so let's go back to this example the the first case where he would be selling futures contracts to use this example to understand how the framework of hedging works okay so the idea behind hedging is that you don't disturb you can't disturb the underlying positions okay these underlying positions that you have remember these cannot be disturbed because the if you look at these positions the inventories they will be sold whenever the selling team sells can find the customers so that is that is something that relates to the physical operation of the business okay they have a normal cycle of selling there may be a seasonal pattern and this and that okay maybe gold india and all would be buying gold before the jewelry se uh, the festive season okay so there's more demand at that time so the seasonalities so the underlying operation of the business cannot be disturbed just because you want to hedge okay now we are going to see how a hedging program works the hedging program works by basically setting up hedge positions where the hedge positions the profit pnl on the hedge position will offset the pnl on the underlying positions are you following yes. so this is the principle that we'll, we'll understand it better I've, and everything is there in your notes so you don't need to write anything as such so all the things are explained in the what is the hedge position and everything is explained in your notes but first let me explain the concept a brief explanation of the concept with this euro dollar futures <coughs> example so the way it works is that you set up a bunch of hedge position you have you already understand underlying positions yes. we have already gone through underlying positions okay on a passive risk book you will see a bunch of underlying positions so you will be conscious of your underlying positions 
and then you will basically be monitoring the market so for instance what did you do here the idea is you monitor the own market okay the each of the krf markets for the underlying positions and then if you feel that the market is going to move in such a way that the underlying position is going to make a loss okay like you did in this case here you were monitoring you knew that your underlying position is short this is the krf market that you're looking at three month euro dollar interest rates okay and you know your underlying position is short and after analyzing the market and taking a view you came to the conclusion that this market is going to rise rapidly and if if your view is correct and you assume that your view is correct then that's how you hedge okay your hedge decisions are based on the assumption that your view is correct okay so therefore you you took this view and then you had this view that is very very bullish it's going to go up sharply and then what would the what would the impact be if actually interest rates go up sharply your underlying position would show a loss yes sir. yes because your interest liabilities would go up sharply yes, sir. all right so therefore now are you concerned and you also you have the other constraint that although you are very concerned that your underlying position is going to get a loss uh, get into a loss you can go back to the bankers and say please renegotiate my uh, floating rate interest rate loan rewrite the agreement and make it into a fixed rate loan that's not how it works okay you can't go and do that so for all practical purposes you can't touch the underlying position from the perspective of the hedging team you have to assume that you can't touch the underlying positions okay so they will remain as they are and they will run off based on the normal operation of the business when there's seasonal demand for gold then they'll sell off some gold and then the underlying position will re reduce remember this balance sheet has to be conceptually almost instantaneously uh, reconfigured uh, and rewritten based on new information so if some of the inventory runs off okay you will have to re -up, you have to update your inventory figures are you following okay so this is meant to be it's not like something static and you sit on it for five years it doesn't work like that you have to continuously update the underlying positions on the balance sheet based on information that you get from the business the business will inform the hedging team that we have sold 2000 pounds of uh, 2000 ounces of gold then you have to reduce your gold inventory by and if they will also update you on fresh additions to inventory okay so net change in inventory will be informed by the business and that the hedging team will have to update so which means your balance sheet has to be updated at all times okay so that is assumed here you have to assume that every basically every second to second you are updating the balance sheet with fresh information okay all right so you can't the point is you can't touch yeah so when we are on the passage risk and when market price is less than fair value, so up to what time we will wait? No, don't make these don't make these into general statements because what we did, I'll tell you what, what, one minute. Let me first clarify one thing. When you uh, this situation which we showed you, we showed you a situation where the market price is less than fair value, and we decided not to do anything. Okay, so don't make this into a general rule because this is also this action this action or lack of action this decision not to do anything that is also based on the fact that your underlying position in this market is short your underlying position in this market is short if it was long it would be a different decision so don't generalize this uh, at this point don't generalize are you following because i think from your question it seems like you are trying to evolve a general rule okay don't evolve this as a general rule because this particular decision not to do anything is based on the fact that your underlying position in the euro dollar future uh, in the three month euro dollar interest rate market the krf market is short if it was long it would be a different decision so don't generalize from this to all things just wait for a while you'll get the picture so first you understand that a hedging position the 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 hedge position the way that hedging will work is that you will have to set up a bunch of offsetting <coughs> hedge, hedge positions okay you cannot touch the underlying position everyone knows underlying positions now and you can also see that if you have for instance here in this market your underlying position is short and if the market shoots up rapidly then you are going to have a lot of losses that you understand 
so now you have certain constraints you have a set of underlying positions they are connected to certain krf markets you analyze those krf markets and you take a view okay in this case when you take a view on one side in this case your underlying position is short and your view is that the market is going to shoot up so straight away you can see that your underlying position is going to generate huge losses all right so you need to do something to mitigate these losses but at the same time you are not allowed to touch the underlying positions you can't go back to the bank and say please change my floating rate loan into a fixed rate loan so therefore you need to set up some hedge position okay you need to set up a hedge position which is going to be remember the word offset there's only what you need to remember you need to set up a hedge position which will offset the assuming that your view is correct assuming that the market actually shoots up like you expect okay <coughs> in that case <coughs> the hedge position pnl is going to offset the underlying position pnl your projection for underlying for the underlying position pnl is going to be negative yes nobody is nodding based on your market view yes. that the market is going to shoot up then the projection for the underlying position pnl is that is going to make losses yes, yes? so yeah so have you followed where at, up to what point have you not followed i, I mean at to what point have you followed so this is the last part, you said. Yeah. So underlying position you understand? And every underlying position basically con connects you to a KRF market. Okay. Is an underlying position in a particular KRF market. Okay. So in this case, you are short the Euro dollar three, mo uh, three month Euro dollar interest rates. Okay. It's like you're short three month Euro dollar interest rates. So what do you do? You are conscious of your underlying position. You monitor a particular KRF market and you form a view. Okay, all these steps will be written down for you, so don't worry about that. You'll have to uh, all that, but try to understand the concept here. Okay, you are following this. Uh, the uh, you form a view. Now, based on your view, you can you are projecting that the underlying position will have huge losses. Okay, so now at the same time, you are not allowed to touch the underlying position. So your goal is now the word offset. You are going to set up a hedge position in such a way that when the underlying position is lo losing money the hedge position should make money are you following yes. this is the basic idea that's, that's why you should remember only one word offset the hedge position must offset the pnl of the underlying position and the pnl forecast you're coming at based on your forecast that's why everything is based on your market view that's why i'm forcing you to look at market prices real market prices because in every decision making role in finance you'll have to take views on markets okay so you can see in hedging also you take a view on the market so you see that based on your view the underlying position is going to make losses so you need to set up you need to set up so what kind of hedge position will you set up you will set up a hedge position which is going to make money when the interest rates start shooting up right is this clear so therefore you can see clearly and there's another way of doing it basically that you have already seen this that essentially what you do is you have a forecast we are looking at this one actually okay um bullish on three months dollar rates we just write rates okay this is bullish on three month dollar rates and that is bearish okay all right so this is bearish on three month dollar rates view and this is a bullish so bullish and bearish we normally use it as a uh, forward looking a description to a description of a forward looking uh, view okay so this is in this situation so what you do is so basically you can see you can apply this framework as well if you apply this framework you mechanically get there all right and so the basic idea here is and another way of understanding the hedge framework is that you uh, you are now going to set up a hedge position whenever your forecast suggests that the underlying position is going to lose money okay only when it's going to lose money according to your for if the underlying position is projected to make money then you don't do anything are you following we'll come to that but first let's understand the losing money position yes everyone's following okay so your base because your view is projecting that the underlying position is going to lose money you are now very concerned at the same time you can't touch the underlying position so you are going to now set up an offsetting 
hedge position in such a way that that hedge position should make money when interest rates start shooting up because when interest rates start shooting up your underlying position is going to lose money so the basic principle so here parul is an example of a basic principle that you can understand a general principle which applies in all situation that your hedge position should be set up in such a way that your hedge position pnl will offset the underlying position pnl and these are both projected pnls projected based on your market view so your market view always comes into the picture yes because the hedger's market view has to come into the picture yes everyone follows now so what kind of position makes money in euro dollar futures what kind of position makes money when uh, interest rates uh, when the uh, three, uh, the cash market interest rates start shooting up it is going to be a short position because as the market realizes that rates are rising the euro dollar futures prices will start to fall can you see because they are associated with uh, essentially it it depends on how long the market takes to wake up sometimes but eventually the market has to wake up because this is coming let's say this is for march this is for june this is for september so as rates start shooting up and the market is predicting 1.72 so let's say if you come to january then the rates are 1.92 then you come to uh, february the rates are still 1.93 then in uh, early march the rates are 1.95 then it's impossible for the market to retain this price because this price is consistent with 1.72 cash market interest rates are you following okay so by this time the market would definitely have come down so the broad rule that you can derive now this is particularly relating to euro dollar futures so this is a very important contract so it's important to understand and you can use it for hedging in short term interest rate risk okay going out several years because the contract is very liquid okay you can very very specifically hedge depending on how your loan dates are set up okay uh, you can very specifically hedge the uh, floating interest rate risk so therefore this the rule on euro dollar futures is that if market if uh, cash market interest rates start going up then euro dollar futures prices will start falling is this clear are you following this it follows from this system the way it's computed sooner or later the futures market has to come in line with the remember we did convergence of cash and futures market prices we did that remember in the earlier part of this course look at it look up look it up in your textbook okay eventually the futures and cash market prices have to come together okay so are you following this so the general rule for euro dollar futures we can remember is if cash market interest rates start rising euro dollar futures start to fall okay so therefore what you are going to do is now that your view is that the cash market interest rates uh, are going to go up okay your cash market interest rates are going to go up therefore consistent with this futures market your view for the futures market is that futures prices are going to fall euro dollar futures prices are going to fall okay and you can basically formalize this in this framework so that way you are able to connect it to the theoretical frameworks that you have covered just like your npv irr gordon growth model same framework you have a forecast based on that forecast you have a forecast based fair valuation and you see that the market price is higher than the fair value based on your forecast so therefore market price higher than fair value so you sell okay that's another way of justifying it but the other way of thinking about it intuitively is that you see that the underlying position is likely to start making huge losses so you are uh, you are trying to set up a hedge position which will make huge profits when the underlying position is making huge losses that is when interest rates are shooting up is everyone clear okay so in this case what you are going to do as treasury manager is you are going to start selling futures contracts okay so you will go into the market and you will sell all these different maturities these are the rates that you are looking at you will be selling out all of these okay because in all cases market price is higher than fair value and if you sell this what will happen as market prices start to rise as market prices start to rise your underlying position starts losing money but your hedge position now these short euro dollar futures contracts the short positions that you have created by selling these euro dollar futures contracts those are all your hedge positions this is clear those are going to be called the hedge position we'll get to the i'll get take you to the text right now where the hedge position is defined but i just wanted to explain it first so that you are has everyone understood the concept okay so the hedge positions they will start making money because as cash market rates rise in general we know that your euro dollar futures prices will fall so you have already gone short now just think about the only think about the hedge position now in the euro dollar futures market you have gone short 
and then prices start to fall then you make money yes if you go short in any market and then after that prices start to fall then you make money yes yes your whatsapp also agrees with that assessment okay all right so is this clear the logic is clear you set up so the the general principle that you need to remember is that you cannot certain general principles okay now let's get to that uh let's get to some of the theoretical material which is there in your notes i think this is the one yeah maybe we need to make this 115 okay can you guys still read on the last bench <coughs> hardik you can read this yes, sir. okay uh all right uh, now let's look at some of the material in your uh, text in your text so even this is too big or uh, maybe we have uh, what is all this talking here who is talking <coughs> minus uh, minus yes yeah sg1 minus <laughs> sir sg1 sir so yeah you haven't said anything okay i don't want to hear any noises okay there should be no noise there should be pin drop silence you just concentrate come in and concentrate for one and a half hours so we can maximize our learning okay yes. no noise no talking here and there okay all right so let's go to your notes where everything is written down all right let's look at this um underlying positions and hedge positions so whatever i've told you i have already explained here uh krfs KR, already explained underlying positions already have been explained okay now let's understand hedge positions okay i just wanted to give you the scheme first the scheme is also mentioned mentioned in your project brief if you read your project brief you'll see that all these steps are all written down what you have to do you have to take you have sized up your act passive risk book size up your passive risk book anytime you go in as a risk manager whether a passive risk book or an active risk book size up the uh, the book look at all the identify the krfs okay identify the underlying position in each of the krf markets all these steps are written in your notes in your project brief okay but this is what you have to do basic very basic stuff if you remember if you revise it one or two times you'll remember it so whether it's a speculative book or a hedge book uh, or, or a passive risk book it's the same pro process size up the book identify what's there on assets and liabilities okay and uh, identify krfs then list down the underlying position for each krf market which we did here okay then take each of the krf markets like you did in the case of the euro dollar futures take each of the krf markets and go through this exercise of forming a view form a view on the market using either f fundamentals or technicals okay form a view on the market and once you form a view on the market then you know which side your risk is on because in this particular market your underlying position is short so your risk is on the upside if this market shoots up then you are in trouble so you take a view if it's if it's going to go up according to you then you need to quickly put on some hedge positions to cover the risk but if it's going to go down according to you then you are not concerned because your underlying position is short and the market is going to go down so according to you you are not expected to lose money on the underlying position are you following okay same exercise has to be gone through for each krf market that you have on your book yes the process is the same you just have to repeat it so there's no new learning there yes everybody follows okay all these steps are written down but try to understand here what is being uh, uh, what the scheme is the scheme will make sense it's a logical scheme once you understand it study it for a couple of times you'll understand and then you'll never forget it okay so always focus on understanding even if you uh, understand in hindi if some of you think in hindi some people may think in english okay doesn't matter what your thinking language is but at least understand it in your own head and as i said your english when you write your exam i'm not going to penalize you for grammar you don't even have to write proper sentences but you have to use the keywords so that we know that you understood the point okay all right so for every market now every krf market you have to go through this exercise form of view based if your underlying position is long then we can see it here itself in your project brief um where is the project brief at one part yeah at one part of your project brief it says this that so as i said some of the cell numbers may not match all right you'll see the whole scheme okay um yeah see if your underlying position is long okay 
this is already now we discussed short position in the euro dollar futures case but now reverse it okay this hedging logic everything is written here but you have to understand the logic for it okay so in this case if you're underlying position let's say now if we take another example we take another example which is uh, no not this um here so let's take the example of let's say gold okay we look at gold gold is also one of our krfs okay our underlying position in the case of gold is long okay so i draw up the gold chart here so i have to go by each krf market and this i'm not going to repeat because uh, the the process is the same the logic is the same you have to go if, you, if there are like 15 krfs on the uh, on the risk book that you're looking at if there are 15 krfs there maybe there are 25 krfs then you have to do the same thing 25 times but it's actually the same thing so there's no new learning as such you just have to repeat the process are you following yes so on a large risk book you can have many many krfs yes okay so you look at gold all right you form a view on gold in this case let's say the view is that the gold is going to that gold is going to fall okay we have got a very short term uh, horizon but we want to make it a little bigger okay let's make this a little bigger all right so you can look at this and you form a view that let's say the view is that the that the price is that the chart is bearish now this is going to fall quite substantially going to come back to 1300 let's say that's the view you analyze the market you have to form a view let's say in this case your view is bearish now your underlying position is in gold is yes everybody is not clear srishti what does your whatsapp say what is the underlying position in in, in 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 the case of magma what is the underlying position in gold no long everybody is saying long now she'll say she'll say long yes no no idea okay good anyway so uh, the underlying position is long i was worried she might say large elaichi or something so everyone is saying long she might say elaichi so no, anyway okay now understand this one minute uh, okay guys so your underlying position is long yeah <laughs> that will be in the notes i put it in the notes okay guys now so your underlying now what should you do now we are going to make a distinction here between your we are going to make a distinction between uh, underlying tra hedge transaction and hedge position okay here this component of your notes talks about the difference between hedge transaction and hedge position okay so if your underlying position in the in, in gold is long okay now you're worried that your market analysis suggests that the price the outlook is bearish okay so is your underlying position now going is likely to make money or lose money lose money so therefore you need to do something about it you can't touch the underlying position so what kind of hedge position are you going to set up short position okay remember hedge position a hedge position is a type of position a hedge position is a species of position right just like contract is a species of agreement yes sir. okay so a hedge position is a species of position so therefore it there can only be two types of hedge positions long or short yes sir. okay so the question is if your underlying position is uh, long and you're worried that the market view the, the market view is bearish okay then you have to set up a short hedge position okay to set up a short hedge position the hedged transaction that you will do so we want to make a distinction between we have to be very particular about the use of words <coughs> so the hedge trans transaction can either be sale or purchase of some asset so just like position can be long or short the transaction can be sale or purchase mm -hmm. all right so if i ask you what is the hedge transaction don't say long the hedge transaction should be buy buy or sale or purchase or sale okay hedge position is long or short hedge transaction is sale or purchase are you following so the use of words has to be very you have to be very very particular about the way you use words okay so very simple point but it's important to be clear about the distinction so in this case what you're going to do is you're going to set up you're going to sell gold yes you are because if you sell gold if your transaction is sale of gold then the resulting position is going to be a short position yes if you do a sale of gold then your resulting hedge position will be a short position which will offset the losses on your underlying position yeah what were you saying tanya you use the mic if you can 
Yeah, I gave the mic. Yeah, use the mic. <coughs> quiet, quiet. When she's asking, when she's asking the question, everyone else should be quiet. Okay, let's focus properly on the class. Well, if we are selling gold, uh, the online position will change. No. Because you are not, no, no, one minute. Remember that rule, you can't touch the underlying position. The only way that the underlying positions change is when there are some changes in the business underlying, uh, uh, the sales team makes a sale. So the sales team informs you that we have sold, uh, say, 500 ounces of gold. If the sales team tells you, one minute, be quiet. Let's understand the question and let's understand the answer. Okay. Uh, the only way that the underlying position changes is when there are some changes in the underlying on the conduct of the business. I mean, as a result of the normal conduct of the business. So the you started out with 2,500 ounces of gold. Now after two after say let's say two weeks, the sales team informs you that we have sold 500 ounces. So you're going to update your underlying position to now it's going to be 2,000 ounces, assuming there's no new uh, addition to inventory. Okay. So if there's some new addition to inventory, some new gold has come out of the ground. Okay, that has to be added. So net change in inventory has to be always updated so these figures should always be up to date and you have to be as a hedge team as a hedging team you have to be constantly in touch with the sales team and other parts of the business all right so everyone who everyone who can give you relevant information in terms of updates and things like that so you have to be in touch the, that's the only way the underlying position changes but you cannot do as a hedging team you can't do anything to change the underlying position all you can do is watch the market in this case you're watching the gold market okay as one of your krfs is gold you're watching the gold market you're forming a view in this case you form a view that the market is bearish okay so therefore you know then from that view you based on that view you can project that the underlying position is going to make losses so now you know you have to set up an offsetting hedge position and what kind of hedge position does it have to be it has to be one which will make money when the market goes down are you following it has to make money when the market goes down because the underlying position will be losing money when the market goes down so it has to be the opposite so you need to set up an offsetting hedge position. therefore you need to set up a short hedge position are you following and to set up a short hedge position the hedge transaction that you will do is sale of gold yes okay are you following everyone is following this logic okay so therefore you will go here and in this case you're using gold futures now it depends on which one you want to sell let's say we are going to take the nearer this is too close so we're going to sell the feb contract so you're going to click here and sell the feb contract are you following yes yes, yes? okay so i'm just going to cancel this because we don't want to do any transactions here keep the account clean okay so this logic is clear now so the idea here is you can read up your notes later on and and uh, everything is explained in the notes pretty much either it's in the notes or in the project brief okay either everything is explained in the project brief what is the hedging logic what you have to follow okay we will have uh, so this now anybody here doesn't understand the hedging logic now what you have to do size up the risk book identify krfs uh, list down the underlying position for each krf then take each krf by turn repeat for all krfs take each krf by turn form a view on the market if the underlying position is long and the market view is bearish then you are going to lose money on the underlying but you need to set up an offsetting hedge position therefore you need to do a hedge transaction and the hedge book you have to think of it as hedge book is sitting on top of the underlying book you do not touch the underlying book you just set up offsetting positions when you are afraid that the underlying position is going to lose money yes sir. so the hedge position so the total pnl remember when we defined uh, speculators and hedgers we talked about total pnl a total position okay a total risk we talked about total risk okay we have what first position will reduce total risk and first position first transaction will reduce or increase total risk okay now what is this total risk now you understand better the total risk is going to be the risk of the hedge positions plus the uh, the the two positions are going to be the hedge position plus the underlying position so when you are looking at your total pnl also you are going to compute the total pnl hedge pnl plus underlying position pnl this is clear right 
so that's why your hedging if you get it right if your view is correct and you get it right then uh, it your underlying position your net loss will there won't be any net loss from this level say if I sell the entire 2500 ounces of gold there is no for that means I have locked in the value of that gold inventory at 1465 okay because I sell the entire 2500 ounces at this price now the underlying position lose money even if the market goes to 1200 the underlying position will lose money 2500 into 1466 minus 1200 but there will be an equal amount of gain on the futures positions which is the hedge position so the hedge position PNL will offset the underlying position loss okay the PNL so is this clear so the total PNL is what we are interested in so a total PNL is basically locked in for the gold price at this level is everyone clear you have understood the scheme yes, okay sir. please go and, and understand uh, we still have some time okay, sir. one minute one minute one minute one minute yeah what yeah yeah give her the mic give her the mic mic is not working yeah be quiet everybody else be quiet you don't want to lose marks in the last over yes when we look at the edge transaction of the edge position how will we define this particular transaction that we just did no, no for the example of gold the example of gold that we discussed the hedge the hedge transaction is a sale you can see it is written in your notes okay go and study the notes that i've given you okay it's all there in your uh, in the technical note okay um, now and the rest of the other ideas are in the project brief so between the two you will get all the ideas that we have discussed today and there will be some other stuff so the hedge transaction is a sale what did i do i sold gold I, I engaged in a sale of gold I sold gold okay so I, I, I engaged in a sale of gold so the hedge transaction when you describe the transaction it's a sale of gold okay so the transaction is not short gold the hedge tra the transaction is sale of gold the resulting position is a short gold position is this clear it's just uh, using the words carefully sale versus short short is the position sale or purchase is the transaction okay transaction leads to a position yes clear okay yeah in this case you are using gold futures but you can also use spot gold it depends now in this case i have forced you to use futures okay but this is a choice you can make in the real world because spot gold is also very actively traded pretty much around the clock 24 into 5 okay so uh, you can also trade in the spot gold market if you want and uh, you can also trade in gold futures the difference is in spot gold remember what is the difference going to be we have one minute we can let's answer this in one minute what is one of the things that will lead you to choose spot gold is a what kind of market very liquid. it's very liquid yes but what kind of institutional arrangement exchange trader or OTC spot gold is OTC and gold futures exchange traded okay so therefore what is one of the considerations that might move you to uh, trade in spot gold flexibility. flexibility which means you can customize the contract size remember here you can't this is hundred ounces this contract is hundred ounces okay that's why because in this project I'm forcing you to use futures contracts that's why you notice that your gold position is a round multiple if you want you can sell uh, like 25 futures contracts yes. and hedge your entire gold position okay but in the OTC markets you don't have that you can ask for a price for 347 ounces that's why you might decide and as uh, Parul said it's also a very liquid market OTC gold is very liquid okay now you can go 13 seconds okay. so please make sure you read up all the material okay and uh, we are going to start trading in uh, okay we'll start trading yeah yeah this is a technical question give her the mic give her the mic yeah no no you actually you're saying what you're saying is the opposite one minute no no one minute one minute the, let's take the first statement that you made the liabilities are always to be taken as being short you're short 
not the liabilities because liabilities are liabilities are things that you have to pay okay uh, okay you have one more class okay never mind okay so no no underlying position what is it you are saying underlying position is uh, okay. uh, okay. uh, so what is your understanding? What is the underlying position for copper? Why? Because uh, when the price goes up, we are making money. So we will, uh, we have long position. Okay. So that logic will be clear. That why is it long? Because when the price goes up, I make money. The price goes down, I lose money. And it is only the long position that behaves like this, not the short position. So therefore, my position is long. So the logic should be clear. Yeah. Then you know, Aussie, you told that it's not you told, you said. You said it's short position. Yeah. No. So you said it's long position. In the dollar yen, we are long. Yeah. Okay. Maybe you can go back and listen to those discussions. We have discussed it twice. Okay, I'll explain it one more time. Okay, we have already discussed it twice, class, but I'll explain one more time. So, understand that in, in the in the case of the yen loan, okay, the case of the yen loan, the KRF market is either yen dollar FX or dollar yen FX. Okay, so the assets are in dollars and the liabilities are in yen. So you have to pay back the yen liabilities with dollars. So. Yen. Either you call it yen dollar or you call it dollar yen in the beginning at the start starting point. Okay, you can call it either. But the KRF market is when you identify the KRF market for this balance sheet item, we would say that this is either the yen dollar exchange rate or the dollar yen exchange rate. It's pretty much the same. Okay, because it's either one by this or it's uh, this item itself. Okay, so it's either one by this or is this price itself? Either one by one hundred eight fifty four. Okay. So now, now what we are saying further when you are trying to go through this because remember the process is that you have to identify your uh, KRF markets you have to be aware of what is the underlying position okay now that's the part we are doing now why is the underlying position we say with respect to the dollar yen market now here we are making a we are making a choice we could have either looked at yen dollar or we could have looked at dollar yen okay so I'm saying that you look at dollar yen first it will create more, it will create more complications which is better for you because you'll learn more okay and uh, here let's look at it this way are you following this point so we could have either looked at the krf market we could either looked at the krf market with the dollar as the base currency with dollar yen or yen dollar with yen as the base currency okay although we will be hedging using an instrument which is basically the dollar yen futures when we go into the hedging when we go into the hedge transactions we will be trading yen futures which is yen as base currency although we'll be doing that but for the purposes of analysis and coming out with our view decision on whether to sell or to buy okay uh, that we will be using dollar yen because that is the more dominant market the spot dollar yen market are you following okay so for uh, so there is a slightly more complicated situation for analytical purposes for understanding what the underlying position is we will be using dollar yen and when we have to head we'll be using yen futures which is actually yen as base currency okay so it'll become more complicated but that is where you learn more okay so now we look at the dollar yen market we have to apply the same logic we are now the question that we have is the krf market that we have identified is dollar yen okay so it is dollar as base currency now we are asking this question what is the underlying position in this krf market okay so the way to understand the way to answer that is absolutely mechanical we will ask ourselves if this market goes down do we lose money or make money if this market goes up do we lose money or make money so now see what happens when the market goes down you can think of it intuitively also we can do it mechanically on the sheet okay we can do it mechanically on the sheet but it's better to think about it intuitively remember in this example the dollar yen is the base asset i mean the dollar is the base asset 
in this shot. This is my question. This price shows US dollar price or yen yen price? It shows both prices, but the base asset is dollars. So when it goes down. So what is happening? Dollars getting weaker or stronger? Yeah. So right. So it's going down. Dollars getting weaker. So yen is getting yen is getting stronger. When this chart goes up, dollar dollar is getting stronger. Yen is getting weaker. Okay. Now what is dollar asset or liability for you? Or for you in this case in this KRF market. Dollar is a asset or liability. In this case, in this case, in this example. Here, when you are looking at this loan for this KRF market, the dollar is like an asset or liability. Asset because your revenues. Yeah, yen is liability, dollar is asset because your revenues are in dollars. How will you pay the yen yes. uh, loan? You pay with dollars. Okay, you use dollars to buy yen in the market. Okay, so if if. Uh, the when the dollar weakens if the asset is getting weaker and the liability is getting stronger okay now go back to this now you have identified that the dollar is the dollar is the asset and for this krf market the way we have defined it okay uh, for this particular uh, exposure on the balance sheet the dollar is the asset and the yen is the liability okay now we are focusing on the krf market defined with dollar is the base asset okay so it, and we look at the chart you know that when the chart drops dollar is getting weaker yen is getting stronger when it, the chart goes up the dollar is getting stronger yen is getting weaker now take the downside example when the chart drops when the chart drops the asset is getting weaker liability is getting stronger so is that good or bad Liabilities is increasing. It's bad. It's bad, right? Yes. Because your assets are reducing, your liabilities are increasing. Yes. That is one way of intuitively thinking about it, right? Because your assets is increasing. So each, if you think of it now, when the chart, another way to look at it is when the chart is dropping. Yes. That means each dollar is buying less and less yen. Is it true? Each dollar, yes. Each dollar, when the chart drops, suppose it drops from 108 to 100. That means each dollar is buying less and less yen. Yes. Yes. So dollar is your asset. Yes. So each unit of asset is buying less and less of the liability. That means you have to put up total more dollars. That is a loss. Yes. Is that clear? You agree that's a loss? Yes. It's logical that it's a loss. Yes. Yeah. So this is how you should think about it. So now when you think about it, your if you go through this process, okay, when the dollar is going down, each unit of dollar, each unit of your asset is buying less and less of the liability. Okay, so you have to total put up more units of assets. We are making money. You're, how you're making you're losing money. When each unit of the asset is buying less and less of the liability, you have to put up more assets to satisfy the same liability. But the liability will remain same. Liability remains the same, but your total assets you have to you are losing money, right? Each unit of uh, each unit of the do assets, a dollar is the asset. Each unit of the dollar is uh, buying less and less of the yen of the liability when the dollar yen drops. Yes. Okay. So you are losing money because you have to pay up more and more of the assets. More units of asset have to be put up to satisfy the same liability. Yes. Yes. So that means you are concluding that you are looking at this KRF market. When the market drops, you are losing money. Yes. When the market goes up, obviously on opposite you will make money now. Yes, sir. Because now when the market drop, when the market rises, less the market rises to 125. Mm -hmm. If dollar yen goes from 108 to 125, that means each unit of your asset is buying more and more of the liability. Okay. Are you following? Yes. Is it true? Yes. Sir. When it goes up, that means each dollar is buying more and more yen. More, uh, yes. more and more yen. So each so unit of asset, your each unit of asset is buying more and more of the liabilities. So that means whatever you had provisioned earlier, you have to use lesser, less, uh, lesser, fewer units of assets to satisfy the same liability. Yes. So that is good for you. Yes, that means you are making money. Yes. Sir. So you have a situation now in this KRF market where your underlying position is such that when the market drops, you lose money. When the market goes up, you make money. So what kind of position long is this? Position. Has to be a long position. Yes. Are you clear now? So you have to understand it logically. Don't memorize. If you memorize, then you will not be able to answer. If I give, if I change the question, if I change <laughs> it to like Norway or Mexico or something, then 
you will not be able to answer. You have to understand the logic, right? Yes. Sir. Yes. Yeah. You also have a question. Okay. Sir, if you have a question. Uh, help us to in reducing our losses. What? Hedge, hedge uh, transaction helps yeah. us to reduce our losses. Then it will also reduce our profit. If the if our underlying uh, view. Yeah. So the goal is not to make profits. The goal is to uh, minimize losses. You see this written in your notes. When we discuss hedging, the goal of hedging is to reduce. Uh, um, yeah. Welcome. Welcome. So the very beginning of hedge transaction and hedge position it's all there in your notes so the goal of hedging is you have to understand the goal of hedging is to basically bring certainty to your cash flows so we showed you this example in the case of gold where if we lock in the gold price at that level okay and if our view is correct that the gold price is bearish that the outlook is bearish so once I sell the entire 2500 ounces of my underlying position equivalent of that I sell in my to the futures uh, contracts in in my hedge portfolio okay so my hedge position goes to minus 2500 contracts at 2500 ounces okay and the underlying position is plus 2500 ounces so my net position is zero so whatever from this point onwards I have actually locked in I have actually locked in a 1466 price for my entire gold inventory because even if the market price drops to 1100 the underlying will lose will money between this to this but the hedge position will make a corresponding amount of money so the total pnl hedge pnl plus our underlying pnl will end up being no difference compared to what the price was compared to what it was when the market price was 1466 Are you following yes sir. so the goal is basically Just we have satisfied the, the goal of hedging the goal of hedging is not to make money the goal of hedging is to bring certainty to cash flows now we have done that because we have made our cash flow certain no matter what happens to the gold price we will realize a net price of 1466 on our gold inventories absolutely locked in no no uh, no change is possible so we have brought certainty to our cash flows this is the goal of hedging okay unfortunately many uh, even professional hedging teams they don't understand this concept clearly so they start speculating they, they start to forget where the hedging stops and where the speculating starts so the they forget all the only that. Uh, reason for hedging is to minimize your losses and so to minimize, your cash flows. yeah to bring certainty to your cash flows yes. what was the problem in the euro dollar fro floating rate loan we don't have certainty yes, yeah. on cash flows because these uh, really we don't know okay. these rates we don't know what the fixings are going to be the fixing in March fixing in June fixing in September we don't know what it is if I now actually sell if I in this case if I sell the euro dollar futures contracts at these prices I have okay. effectively I have effectively logged in these I have locked in these uh, prices that means essentially I have ensured that my net uh, fixing cost for net interest rate cost for the next for three months to six months is going to be this for for six months to nine months is going to be this and for nine months to 12 months is going to be this I've locked in I have no more fear the interest rates can shoot up to 15% also makes no difference to me okay so from uncertain interest rates I have, have now I have so I interest. have now got certainty for my cash flows which is a huge advantage in a corporate setting because I can now focus so on my fast. business now remember you can also for on this future no you don't have to worry for for this point for these exposures now I'm, my job is done okay because I've locked in these rates of course we can talk about a, a dynamic hedging program which is slightly more complicated we don't need to worry about that at this point but if you look at a passive hedging program okay which is uh, our static hedging program where we this is what we should this is the most conservative approach to hedging okay so we have done our job hmm. we have locked if these rates are acceptable to the company if the company is okay with paying 172 okay for the next fix 164 and then 158 and a half if the company is okay with that hmm. then you've done your job now you can forget about this so this is the objective of hedging is to bring certainty to cash flow so the business remember what we said that the um, that these companies are not in the business of speculating on these kinds of markets mm -hmm. they are in the business of running the business and um, running a mining operation extracting efficiencies for the value chain so the goal of the hedging team is to bring certainty to cash flows wherever there is uncertainty because there are wherever there are underlying positions and actively traded KRF markets 
there is a lot of fluctuation in prices possible and that may go against you or it may go for you so there's uncertainty to the cash flows so there you lock in the uh, you lock in certainty for your cash flows that means you cannot lose money anymore okay so it's a very defensive approach mm -hmm. the classical approach to hedging is a, should be a very defensive approach the idea is to remove the risk and so that the business can concentrate on the conduct of the business or running an efficient mining operation or running an efficient sales operation okay that is what the business is meant to focus on is the business is not meant to focus on uh, fluctuations of market prices is this clear and sir if our underlying position is long yeah and the head uh, the hedge team thinks that the uh, the market is going to fall yeah then they go they buy they sell the whatever they are uh, yeah let's wherever say, they are hedging yeah yeah where like in this case we are hedging through futures contracts yes. so if your view is that the underlying position in gold is long hmm. and your view on the gold price is bearish then you would sell the gold futures yeah, yeah. But, uh, or you could the, sell spot gold if yeah, you are doing that some yeah. uh, news in the market like they were attack on oil facility yeah yeah something like that mm. then in the next morning the price rise up shoots yeah. up yeah when we earn our profit on the underlying position yes. the hedge position will lose money will lose money, lose money. but you are still locked zero. in your net you are still locked in at whatever price you go short you are basically locked in that price so in this case we are if we go short at 1471 mm. We have locked in 1471.30. Then, in that case, we won't be able to uh, realize more profit from that uh, news. Or yeah. That so, so that is if you are what you are talking about is you are you are pushing towards a, a active uh, you are pushing towards an active or a dynamic hedge program. Okay, uh, dynamic hedging program, which is a second level consideration. We are not going first. Let's understand the simple case. Okay, so in the simple case of the static or the passive hedging program, we are not going to do all that because as far as we are concerned, even if gold prices rise to nineteen hundred dollars, we have locked in fourteen seventy one. That's why I said whether this is acceptable to the business. Okay, is it acceptable to the business to sell its gold inventory at fourteen seventy one at an effective price of fourteen seventy one? After you have hedged, then the market might even shoot up to nineteen hundred. Mm. But if you are okay with fourteen seventy one, if it give you a good margin, mm. okay, you are able to lock in a good operating margin with fourteen seventy one, then you should do it. Because if you wait out for the move to nineteen hundred, mm. well, it could even go down. Down to nine. So the goal of hedging is not to make money. Just to the goal of hedging is to lock in a reasonable uh, profit margin for the business and bring certainty to cash flows. Now you have brought certainty to cash flows okay. because you have crystallized the cash flows, right? Yes. Clear. Yes. Okay. Good.